Hello again everyone, so uh, in the last episode we left uh, with this scene and we'll now try to implement the player logic, the way he moves and how he controls the ball. So uh, I have went ahead and created a C sharp script, it's an empty one. So we go right click, create and C sharp script, name it as player, then drag and drop it on top of our player. Then we click on it and double click to open in Visual Studio. We have arrived at Visual Studio. Now, uh, if we want to move our player uh, on the uh, uh, up and down axis, so back to Unity, we have the X, which is the uh, red axis, which will translate to right and left, and the Z, which is the blue one, will go up and down. How can we do that? Let's go back to Visual Studio and in the update method we will declare two variables. So float h equals input dot get axis row. This method helps us uh, have a value between 0 and 1 if we uh, click on the uh, on one of the uh, right and left arrows or the G or Q uh, also keys. So we put the name of the axis, which will be the horizontal one, and store that into our h variable. Duplicate this line, change this into v, and vertical. So we have our two axes. Then, if we we will test if one of them is not equal to zero, so if h is different to zero uh, or v is different from 0, we will go ahead and translate our player. How can we do that? We will do that by accessing the transform.translate method. Not that one. Translate. And this method accepts a, a vector 3, which is basically a, an array of 3 elements. So new, vector 3, not vector 3 int. <laughs> Okay, so new vector 3, and we will give it our h on the x, 0 on the y, because we don't need to go up and down, and v on the z. Click save, go back to Unity, wait for it to compile, and test this out. Okay, where is our player? Well, he flew away, he's moving way too fast. So, to fix that, we go to back to Visual Studio and declare a float. Let's call this speed. Set equal to 3, for example. And don't forget to multiply by the speed and then by time dot delta time. This time dot delta time will help us avoid our problems of uh, having a high frame rate which will result in very high speeds. So uh, we multiply by a very small value and go back to Unity, let it compile, and then try to test this again. Hopefully, we don't have an error. There's our player. We can move pretty well. I will go ahead and uh, move back the camera a little bit so we can see our court. Test this again. Yeah, that seems about right. Awesome. Now, what we can do is uh, have a target that will help us aim. How can we do that? I will create a cylinder, move it to the middle of the opposite court, scale it on the Y, and a little bit on the X and Z. Okay, it's way off. So, we try to place it somewhere good and move it down. That is good, perfect. Now, back to our Visual Studio. We will declare, declare a transform. Let's call it um, aim target. And make this public. So we can access it. Then go back to Unity. Let it compile. 
name this aim target click on the player we can see the uh, aim target uh, variable here we can click on this and drag and drop it right there now we have a reference to our target we will um, if we want to move it we will declare some um, if statements how can we do that I will add a new variable let's call it bool hitting which be def by default equal to false so if we are hitting we won't move but rather we will uh, move our target so how can we do that before all this we will test for example if we press the F key we can uh, stop moving and hit the ball how can we do that if import dot rips get key down key code dot f this will return a boolean of true or false uh, if the key uh, if the key f is held down if yes then hitting is equal to true else if the same thing but this time if key is up so if we release the key hitting will be false so we have stopped hitting and let me fix that great now we have detected whether we are we are hitting or not how can we apply the movement now well as we remember we have an, uh, a reference to our aim target so we check if hitting so if we are hitting we can go ahead and click on aim target dot translate and we will give it a new vector 3 but this time we will only translate on the x-axis so what is the x-axis it is the h h 0 0 again speed time dot delta time don't forget the sub main color and let's go back to unity and test this out hopefully we can don't have any errors so play we don't really see our target very well but I'm pressing on F it's working we don't press F only move great I will go ahead and move our target a little bit further so it's visible yeah that is good gruesome yes okay but I don't want to move my player if we are hitting the ball so I will add go back to Visual Studio and add a ch uh, check whether we are if we are hitting we won't move so and hitting not and put some parentheses in here so it, uh, either this one is true or this one is true they have to be not hitting and one of these is active go back test I move normally I press F only the target moves and it doesn't go up and down perfect this is looking very good for now and now how can we hit the ball that we haven't even created yet well let's start by creating the ball first so create a sphere let's call this ball and create some new material to call it uh, yellow and give it a yellow color drag and drop it on top of our ball well, our ball is huge for now it's way too big so I'll make it like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 yes that's not bad awesome so that's it for this video in the next one we will 
uh, how, how to hit the ball and then we will create the bot that will return the ball and hopefully play a match <laughs> thank you for watching